Hey there, my friends. Steve Gimlin here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Motivational Firewood Radio Show. Today, we have got a treat. It's a treat for you, and it's a huge treat for me. This is a gentleman that I've known for just over two years. Respect the hell out of him. And we always joke that we're going to start a podcast together called Two Guys on a Front Porch. He is live from his actual front porch today. It could not be better. His name is Sammy Knight. Sammy lives in Oxford, Mississippi. Got himself a very cool ranch down in Texas. Sammy's an avid outdoorsman. He's a managing member and COO of Summit Management Services. And he's also been dating his girlfriend for 48 years. And if you've ever been hiding out in the woods and nobody could see you, chances are you're wearing mossy oak. And Sammy was part of that organization as well. He's one of my favorite human beings on this planet or any other. And we're both members of an organization called APEC. Sammy Knight, welcome to the Motivational Firewood Radio Show. Man, what an honor. It's finally happened. We're here. And uh, what an honor to get on a, a call with you. And I'm like a sponge every time I see one of your posts or hear one of your podcasts. It just, it soaks up and it's so full of knowledge. So thank you for including me. Sammy, thank you for being here. And it's funny, I could return that favor. I'm going to send that ball back <laughs> over the net because you have got, and since the first time we met and had a conversation, I said, you know, you and I are the storytellers of Apex. You know, we just, we share what we share and the way we share it because it's who we are and it comes right from our hearts and souls. And you could write about 20 books with the wisdom you share and it's called Sammyism. So you know, share your approach a little bit for how you share your wisdom and what makes it so uniquely you. You know, I'm kind of a simple guy, so I've always looked at everything simply. For instance, business to me is is extremely simple. Uh, I was explaining it to somebody the other day, and, you know, it's really just, if you think about the most important part of what we do in business is expenses, income, and profits. It's three pieces complex is elements in the middle, but that's what we use to inform the government what we made so they can get their tax. Three simple things. And really it lives and dies on debits and credits. So uh, I, I try to, I try to simplify everything I see so that anybody can understand it, embrace it. I mean, I can get as complex and deep as you want, but you know, if you're in an audience or you're sitting in a group and you start getting too deep, you'll see faces go blank and you'll see them start to look around and stroke their hair. And so I was always a guy that said, you know what, let me make sure that everybody can embrace it. And so everything I do is just my life, just experiences that I've had. And some of them I have every day and some of them are from years past. And um, my dad always told me that uh, the most important thing I have to do in my later years in life is leave absolutely everything I learned here so the next group can be better. It's funny you mentioned your dad because one of my favorite Sammyisms involves a certain sound effect in a lesson. Yeah, the pop. The pop. Explain the pop and, and how your dad shared that wisdom with you. Uh, my dad always had a unique, he was a very simple man too. He always had a unique way of, of, um, I guess making you think. And, um, one particular time I, um, uh, I went to him with one of my infamous challenges and things that I'd done in my life that I shouldn't. And, <laughs> and when I did, I explained to him, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I know I should be better and this is what I need to do. And so I started telling him how I was going to change going forward without me knowing it, you know? And he went, ah, beautiful. You heard the pop. I was like, pop. He said, yeah, it's the sound of your head coming out of your tail. And, uh, so you understand life a little better now. So I've used that a lot too, but it works. He's right. Yeah. When we get out of our own way, when we get our head out of our tail, like you said, uh, it, the vision gets clearer. It, it definitely, the environment smells better and we're surrounded by better energy. So I can see where your dad was going with that. My my dad had some pretty simple wisdom too. And if I was going off the trail a little bit, or if I did something and I tried to say good enough and just look away, he would always ask me the same thing. You're going to leave it like that, bud? 
Because if you're going to have to look at it yeah. every day, what what if you take 10 minutes to fix it now, it's going to save you decades of looking at it and saying, man, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. I wish I had taken the time to fix it. And it keeps us on that path. So I, I truly appreciate your dad's wisdom too. Yeah, well, he's uh, he was something I, I assure you. But, you know, I tell people all the time that, and I just said it a minute ago, business is simple. Life is a challenge, sometimes too complex. And, and, and where we screw up in business is we put emotion in it. And business, I mean, business doesn't have emotion. People have emotion. And with that comes all sorts of, um, uh, uh, feelings and, you know, from hate to fear to whatever you want to come up with. And, and if we can keep emotion out of business and it's so easy and fun. And, and speaking of fun, because I've, I've heard this conversation before and I've, I've heard the story behind it. Uh, Mossy Oak, huge in the camouflage, the hunting, the the fishing, everything, outdoorsmen and sportsmen and, and women, sportswomen as well. Share the story of how you got involved in this. And so many people, you know, you see these like headhunters and they're recruiting the, you know, the most, uh, you know, dynamic, everything like that. I love how you became part of Mossy Oak. So if you just share that real quick. Yeah, so um, uh, first off, let me say that the founder and all of the uh, early adopters inside the company uh, were just brilliant. They had a, an incredible idea, and I came along at the 10-year mark. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with the founder, Toxie Hayes, and in the food business. And uh, when he left to start his camo business, I thought, man, he's going to get hungry down the road. That just... That doesn't make a lot of sense. Boy, was I wrong on that one? But he uh, he approached me, and uh, I was over uh, what we call our shelf stable business in uh, in the food business, and I had international sales as well. And and he approached me and said, uh, "Hey, uh, I want you to come to work for me and take care of licensing and marketing for us." And uh, first, I said, "I'm not coming to work for you. I'll come to work with you." You know, I had a little bit of a little bit of ego going at the time, of course. And uh, he said, well, let's sit down and talk. And I said, all right, where do you want to meet? And so we met at a bumpers drive-in, which is like a Sonic or drive-up, you know, and they bring the food out to you. Um, I pulled up in my company car, and I had on a suit and tie and, you know, slickers and all that. And he pulls up in a pickup. The bed of the pickup was mounted over with hunting stuff, deer stands, things like that. I get in the front seat of the car with the truck with him and there's all kinds of stuff on the floor and I have to move it around to get in and he's dressed in camo and shorts and he's on his way to go hunt and I'm, I'm on my way back to the office and before he ever opened his mouth it was like there's a there's something wrong with this picture that's the world I want to be a part of and I loved corporate America trust me I loved it great people unbelievable opportunities uh, very, very much a big part of my education process and, and managing businesses. But I wanted what he had. And the cool thing is as we grew, more and more people wanted that experience and that outdoor feel and that connection, you know, and how to get away. And later in the days we had, uh, or early on in, in the time was when Tommy Hilfiger was so big and we used to say Cambo was uh, Bubba's version of Tommy Hilfiger. And, and it's true. And um, it was just a great run and great growth, but incredible team, you know, and it, it's a, it's an, an example of what it takes to be successful is it's not just you. And, and something in there goes back to, you know, we're, we're not that far apart in age. I'm 55. We're two of the, the, the experienced statesmen of, Apex, the organization that we're both a part of. And it brings me back to when I was 17 or 18 years old. And my dad, you know, my parents being good parents would just say, get a good education, get a good job with a good company, with good benefits, put your head down for about 45 years and retire with a pension. And what yeah. you saw in that meeting in the pickup truck where you're in the suit and he's wearing camo and all of a sudden you realize it's, it's not just what you get, it's who you are. And you realize that's the 
version of you that you want it to be. That's that's the the outside you wanted to wear every day. So you made the decision, took the shift, and became a more authentic version of yourself. Yeah, it um, it, it was my way of looking in my mirror, probably for the first time, you know. And um, I've been very very fortunate in my life. I've had some phenomenal opportunities and phenomenal people and I screwed up some of them uh, I'll be the first to say but uh, I, I I didn't screw up all of them because I've, I've had a great run and and so many times we we continually fight upstream when we know the better path and it's just getting comfortable with ourselves and our abilities and, and I always believed I say always later in my career. So prior to going to work for Mossy Oak, I always believed that, um, I was making a lot of money for a lot of people or involved in helping people make a lot of money for somebody. And it wasn't a matter of making the money. I've been very fortunate in that arena, but it, it was a matter of saying I can do it. I can do it. I don't have to have this machine by me. Yes, it's great to have, but, I can do that. So if I'll just put a little confidence in me, we can accomplish anything. And I, that's where I learned that. And and I'll go back to the Toxie at, at Mossy Oak. He, he pretty much said, here's what we need to do. Here's where we're at. Go. And we hustled hard and phenomenal business. And now they're approaching their 40th year, I guess. Uh, it's getting close in business. And, you know, it started as a guy's dream. He he loved the outdoors. It was a passion of his. And and he literally took a piece of old elliptical shaped camo and drew bark lines in it while he was sitting hunting one day with a magic marker. And they didn't even have the color that he needed in the in the print. So he went out and picked literally I mean it, it hangs on his wall still today. He picked up, got a baggie, and he picked up some leaves. He picked up some dirt, and he picked up some sticks and said, these are the colors we want. Wow. And those colors didn't even exist. And he and it built from there. So um, it, it, it goes to you. You know, you're a big vision thing, big vision person and believe in the vision. And, and that's an example of a guy that had a vision. And then he put that vision to work, and he and built it out from there. Uh, and it, and it taught me a lot, you know, as I moved more into pure entrepreneurial business, if, if you go into it with the same kind of mindset, you can make it, you can get it there. You know, I was looking at numbers. Uh, I, I, I keep track of every dollar in sales or income or business that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of over the years. And that's, that's a long, a lot of many years. Right. And, um, it's well in the billions and all of that started with somebody having a vision. So what you teach and preach on a regular basis, anybody that's not paying attention to that is, is nuts. And I told you a long time ago that at Mossy Oak, we were going to expand our brand from camo patterns to brand. And, and we put a plan together and we created a vision room. And I didn't know Steve Gamlin, back in those days at all. And so we had a, we had a lock put on the door and we took the lady that was our, at the, at the time we would call her a receptionist in our part of the office. And we flipped the roles and she became the boss in that room. And I was, I was the lower person on the, on the responsibility scale and, and was kind of the run and do. And, and I had, we had the people come in, all the team come in and they wrote first we got pictures cut out pictures of everything they thought we could put the brand on and i thought i even went into it skeptical ah you know this is a good idea i think but it'll be about 200 pictures after a month we had 1100 pictures and then we broke it down in categories and we wrote on the wall and then i had the i didn't have the lady the lady took charge and she moved them under those categories then created subcategories and sub subcategories and then we built this five-year roadmap on uh, what the sales or what the revenue would be and licensing over that next five years by applying this methodology. And 
they're they're going strong today. Let me put it that way. They do a, a remarkable job, both branding and uh, pattern wise. That wasn't me, and, and I say that, and I use that example because I totally flipped the organization. I became the person helping, and yeah, she might ask me a question, you know, and I'd say, "Well, what do you think about this?" But but so I I did that. Part of the reason was to say, "Look, it, it's." It's really the team. It's not the individual that's at the top, and uh, and I've I've always believed that, and I I got to experience it firsthand, and I've lived by it ever since. Yeah, I prefer the team concept to to the me thing. And you and I see so many people out there, and you've probably seen more than I have. People who get to the top of the mountain and they turn around and they high five and congratulate themselves and say, I am self-made. I'm a hundred percent self-made. I don't believe anyone is a hundred percent self-made, even if it's just by the fact that whatever you may have created, somebody bought it and put all that money in your bank account. So I, yeah, I prefer that helps too. Yeah. I prefer being part of a team. You know, whenever I get to the near the peak of any mountain, first thing I do is look around and say, who do I want to enjoy this with me? Who's been a part of my journey? Who is, who do I appreciate and respect that I want to share yeah. this with? Because then we'll always have that. I could reach out 10 years from now and go, Hey, Sam, remember the time we were on the radio show together because we did this together. I believe it's the same way for goals, for having a vision, for sharing it with the right people. Doesn't matter what your what your stat, uh, stature is inside of a company. It's a we thing, not a me thing. And I love that yeah, you, story. I didn't know that part. And I I love that because yeah. you and I were at a, a big event recently, and there were at least four speakers on stage over three days that said you got to have a vision, but none of them said how to do it or what to do after. And and I appreciate you you're mentioning me and my programs there. I'm all about the roots under a vision. Like, hey, great vision. Now how we're going to make it happen. Let's let's get down in the dirt and draw in the sticks and leaves and and uh, let's draw what it is and then let's do something with it. Yeah, I always tell people that to me, management is, there's three forms of management. Managing down, which is kind of the law of the jungle. The head controls everybody in the bottom. Managing laterally. These are people that you don't necessarily have responsibility for, but you can't do your job without their help. So they may report to somebody else, but you need them. They need you, but together y'all have to create a cohesive approach to attack the business and then managing up. And if you do the job right, you manage your superiors to move the business forward. And if they do their job right, they embrace your knowledge because you're on the street. You're, you're right there where it's happening, right? And if you if you teach those that are below you to push you up, then they then you push the next one up and the next one up, and and suddenly you start to see this thing explode because everybody has the same vision, and it's all using the minds that you have in the game. I tell people all the time: if you got one mind in the practice, you got one. If you got two, you got the value of three. And use those minds to move this thing forward. So, And a big part of the vision, and you and I have had conversations about this because we see so many people out there and you say, well, what's your vision? And now I'm going to, I'm going to disclaim, you know, before I even say this, there's nothing wrong with anything I'm about to say, but I ask people, what's your vision? And they spit the vision board starter kit at me, the Lamborghini, the yacht, the mansion, the private jet, the helicopter, the big honking watch, and a bank vault full of gold bars. And I go, hey, that's all amazing. But what are you going to do about your physical health, your emotional well-being, your relationships? What are your core values? How's your faith and spirituality lead you around and forward? Your connection with the world, then your business and your money. And most people go, huh? They don't see yeah. all this other stuff. Yeah. You've been dating your wife. You yeah. want to talk about a relationship and having goals in a relationship dating your wife for 48 years. Um, not that long ago, you had a health scare. So your health became a priority. I saw you this weekend. And I thought, oh my gosh, Sammy looks the healthiest I've ever seen him. See, you know, all of these parts go into it because 
if you're just out there for money and business, money and business, money and business, it's going to be like an old farmer's tractor that doesn't get maintained. And you wonder where the hell's that smoke coming from and what's that clanging noise? Yeah, uh, a very blessed man. God put an uh, incredible lady in my life when I was in high school. And um, I made my share of stupid moves and and she was just solid. I mean, I think God said, okay, this idiot is going to make a lot of stupid moves and he's going to need somebody like her. You know, my dad used to say, he he would look at my wife and go, honey, they, my nickname's Tiger. And my dad would go, honey, God gave Tiger an angel on this earth. And I have to apologize to you. He gave you an idiot. And so many times that was true. Uh, but about a year ago, I had a heart scare. I, you know me, bulletproof. I went to the emergency room because I've been having these chest pains for a while. I did like any other adult male of the species and said, ah, pfft, that's not me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sick. I went to the emergency room and uh, my wife joined me there in the, doctor in the emergency room, they go through the series of five tests and Q and a stuff. And the results of that determine whether or not, if you should, you know, move forward with a test, further testing or with regards to your heart. And, uh, the, the doctor came in and he said, uh, I got kind of good news and I got bad news. And I said, okay. He said, you have a 16% chance of leaving this hospital and having a, a major heart issue or dying and me being who i am said oh well i got 84 percent chance nothing's gonna happen and my wife was sitting by me and she looked at me with that that softness in her glare can i say it that way mm -hmm. and she said what'd you say and the doctor said let me explain it to you another way this isn't an odds bet on a craps table he said, this is a bet on your life. Are you willing to take that gamble? Even though 84% says you win. And uh, he had a few other things that were somewhat comical that he said. I went, you know, maybe I should let them further test. And then later that day, my wife looked at me and she said, you son of a bitch. And my wife doesn't cuss. You son of a bitch. I've been with you this whole time. It's my turn now. You better not die. Oh, wow. I better straighten up. <laughs> so yeah. changes came, you know, and health. And I take different medicine now that not too much, but not that I used to, you know, I used to not and mm -hmm. lost about 50 pounds. And I've got probably another 30 to go. The doctor just released me and I feel absolutely incredible. I, I didn't know I felt bad. You know, so I say to all of your listeners, whatever you do, if you have a question, get a check. Most of you have insurance. What's 25 or 50 bucks in copay for your life? Yeah, that I'm, I'm glad you went that day and I'm glad your angel cussed to, yeah, to, oh to, boy. to get your head to make that pop sound again one more time. Cause I, it won't be the last one. It won't be the last time for me either. Um, my Tina and I have been together for 16 years. And as soon as you said, awesome. you know, your angel, whew, people ask me They go, Steve, you know, you got this beautiful home. You got this nice recording studio. You got this great business. And I just looked at them and I said, you could take all of that away. Cause I've lost it all before. You can take yeah. all that away. And I pointed at her. I said, but you cannot take my Tina. And, and yeah. I've, I've pointed skyward and said that before. And I don't give direct orders skyward, but I say, look, I try to be a good human being. I try to be a great, a good, solid man. I try to live with amazing core values. Please do not take my angel away from me anytime soon. Cause I've got a yeah. lot there of you go. give back time for, for all the love and support she's shown me over the past 16 years. And, I came home yeah. from that big recent Apex event. And there was a card on the counter and it brought me to tears how sweet it was, what she wrote on the inside, her favorite moments. And she's going to smack me when she hears me saying this. 
the favorite parts of our life together. She wrote it as though she was being interviewed. And she was wow. sitting on the couch and I was in the kitchen wow. and I got emotional as hell. And I had to turn around yeah. and, and walk down the hall and catch my breath a little bit. And I walked around the back of the couch and I kissed her on top of the head. And I just said, I'm, yeah. I'm so glad I'm home, wow. babe. I love you. So how cool, man. I, 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 I have a little thing I do with people that I've taken to my camp over the years and, you know, on outdoor excursions and wherever they may be. The first thing I ask them is their wife's back in the day, it was landline and it went to email and it went to cell phone. That's text number. Uh, I asked for their number so that I can contact them. And as the person would leave my camp, I would always immediately either call or send a text or an email just saying, Hey, I know how hard it is to take life on by yourself over the weekend while your husband's away on a hunting trip or fishing trip or golf outing. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate it. And the entire time we were there, what a, what a great guy. It's an honor to make him a new friend of mine, but what I was so impressed with, and this happens every time was his, our conversation about you and I just want to thank you for sharing the time, dude. It, it And it's very sincere. It's in the heart. I say it from the heart. It, it's amazing what those things did for my business. Yeah. You know, I could reach out to the individual again and say, Hey, let's, let's go play a round of golf. They'd call their wife and you know, a time or two, they'd say, wait a minute, I'm going to put you on the speaker. I want you to hear this. Call their wife and their wife would say, Oh, Yes, you need to go with him. Yes, by all means, have a good time. But it, I didn't do it for that benefit. That was just the benefit I got. You know, I did it to say I know how hard it is to be at home by yourself. I get it. So don't forget those things. Those are so critical. And it goes back to what I said at the first. It's simple. Yeah. So simple. Yeah. I didn't know that you did that, Sammy, but I'm sitting here nodding and smiling because I do some very similar things We, you know, I got the recording cool. studio. I come down here, I get on the microphone or on the camera and I'll shoot messages to people and then occasionally to their partners and just say, Hey, I appreciate that you together. I know he went through my program, but I know you're a big part of it because of conversations we had and Oh man, that's so powerful. And and here's the thing. Cool. It's genuinely authentic the way we do it. You know, we don't have a script that looks like an old Mad Libs going, dear name of spouse. I want to thank you for sharing name of spouse's partner with me for this. You know, we're not doing this canned, fake, acted script. You know, I used to tell this to people because I was a wedding DJ for almost 30 years. I was part of more than 1,200 weddings. And the, all the people who had to give a oh, toast. Wow. They try to get clever with their words. They'd have their script in front of them or be reading off their phone. And they'd look at me and say, I'm nervous. And I say, well, I'll do this. I tap my heart. I said, if it starts here and comes out here, and I would point to my mouth, you cannot fail. I said, you pause, you be silent for 10 seconds. You stare at the people you're talking about. Whatever comes out of your heart is going to be 100% right. And they're going to appreciate it more than anything you tried to be clever and write up on a little scrap of paper. And and you just yeah. you just shared that right there, Sam. That's a great example of that. I call it the power of the pause you just mentioned. Yeah. Most powerful thing you can do is speaking, Kating, is pause for a couple of reasons. One, to make a point, but also if someone's asking you a question, don't immediately attack the answer sometimes. Sometimes just pause. And it's an instant compliment to them that they've asked you a good question that took thought. And I don't care who you are. That means something. And, uh, and you don't have to do it out of what you can get out of it. It's, it's out of uh, respect for, hey, a great question. I get some great questions every day. And I have to stop and go, Wow, that's a great question. I need to think about that a little bit before I jump in like I used to do and and answer, you know. I think all those things, though, I can sum them up to all those things I've learned over the years. Go back to what my dad said, the pop. I had to wait till I heard the pop to say, oh, wait a minute. 
there's something else that's more important. There's this has value. This is, you know, simple, but truly, I don't think anybody could put their head farther up their tail than I could. And it's just a simple term, and I I live by it, man. The power of the pop, power of the pop, and Sammy, the pause. I love it, and and I want to respect your time here. How can people reach out to connect with you, Sammy? Learn more, get your Sammyisms, have access to the wisdom that you continue to share every day. How can people find you out there? My Facebook is just Sammy Knight, S A M M I A. Uh, not why I think my parents wanted a girl. Thank goodness for society. I didn't come out like a girl. I, I would be one ugly girl. Um, and, uh, my Instagram is my childhood name that everybody in my town knows me as is tiger night 58. That's my Instagram. So yeah, I love to say hello and just, just an honor to meet new people. I'm a blessed man. I get to, I get to share as long as the good man upstairs allows me to. Well, I appreciate you, Sammy. We are brothers and we always have been the storytellers. And I'm so proud that you are actually on your front porch. We, we just always joke. We're going to have a podcast called two guys on a front porch. So one day, 50% of us lived up to that one today. I'm in a recording studio. That's not a front porch, but I appreciate you, man, and I love and respect you so much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Same way. A real honor. Thank you, Steve, and I look forward to it as well, and have an incredible day, and please tell Miss Tina hello. And please say hello to your angel as well. Thank you.